Welcome back. Uh, unfortunately, we had to close down, as you know, because of the corona outbreak. Um, and we are now back online. And what I'm told is that we have to have a certain number of uh, lectures taking place online now until the end of the semester. So here's the plan. The plan is that I'm going to record a video lecture for you and upload it to our classroom. Uh, it will remain there until the close of the semester. So those of you that have some internet issues uh, or are in areas where you're having difficulty connecting to the internet, you will be able to view these lectures later on. Right? And uh, those of you that don't have any issues, you can view these lectures as many times as you would like. Um, after uh, the lecture is recorded, I'll, after a few days, I'll arrange a face-to-face -face session with all of you, uh, just to sort of address any questions and queries that you may have. Uh, so uh, the reason to do this in, in, uh, in these two ways is so that, number one, I can uh, minimize distractions for myself when delivering the lecture. Uh, and number two, it's just so much more convenient to record the lecture uh, and provide it because nonetheless the lecture has to be recorded. Um, and then the Q&A session will give you the ability to ask uh, any questions that you may have so that I can clarify things to you. Right? Um, I've uploaded the updated course outline to the Google Classroom, so please feel free to have a look at that. Um, and uh, as we move along, I'll be providing you with more helpful uh, reading material and also websites that you can visit and videos that you can watch that can help to clarify some of the concepts. Right? Now, on my end, there's a number of uh, technical difficulties that I face, which is uh, one that I cannot write uh, on my computer because it's not a touch screen and I don't have some sort of a writing uh, tablet on which I can write things on hand. So as we move along, I'll uh, provide certain PowerPoint slides to you, or um, I'll just open up a notepad file like the one that I have over now, and I'll just sort of jot down any words that uh, are relevant to what we're talking about. Uh, so these are sort of, uh, you know, like a broken down version of a whiteboard for us, right? Um, so that's the plan, and uh, I hope that won't be any issue for all of you. Uh, if you have any suggestions for improving how we are moving along, uh, then please do feel free to get in touch either via the Facebook or the classroom. The Facebook is more preferred because of, uh, I can check it more frequently. The classroom, um, I check a little bit less frequently because I have to turn on my computer to get it. Right? Okay, now the second plan is that, uh, you know, there's been uh, sufficient break, I suppose, of about two months now. Uh, so you may have forgotten what we talked about before the holidays started. So I'm just going to uh, restart from, from the beginning and give you a, a crash overview uh, leading up to where we were when we uh, went on the break so that we have a level of a sense of continuity uh, and we don't feel uh, lost in, um, in the material. Right? So, to begin with, uh, if you remember, uh, we talked about the idea of the project and the thought that I delivered to you was that projects are not new, right? Uh, they've been around for a very long time. If you look around in your own environment, you see a lot of projects around, for example, the PR team, for example, the Minare Pakistan and the uh, motorway and bridges and dams and hospitals and different types of service delivery um, databases and things of that nature, right? So projects are something that we're all sort of familiar with to a certain extent and they're something that are not um, alien to us, uh, so to speak, right? Now, the second idea that I give you was that fine, these projects have been around for millennia, uh, but the projects that we had in the old days were significantly different than the projects that we have now. The projects of the old days uh, lacked in certain characteristics, such as I don't really know what their concern for funding was, I don't really know what their concern for manpower was. 
I don't really know if there was a contractor involved in the process or what have you, right? So those were projects that did exist, but um, you know, I, I I suppose we can agree that there were hardly any timelines to sort of meet. There must have been some sort of plans in place, but they were not, uh, you know, the plans that we have nowadays in, in the same meticulous way. So there must have been some thought, uh, but you can clearly see from books of history that certain projects took, you know, 100 years and certain projects took 400 years and so forth. So um, this is quite clear that these projects took much longer than uh, they could have been done in, right, in, in nowadays terms. So what happened with the world was that different types of uh, developments took place and the world uh, grew up and we grew up and we learned and we matured, right? Mm. So with time, what happened was that uh, different movements took place. You know, people left their villages and they started moving into uh, cities and uh, city life began and the industrial revolution began. And because of that, the nature of society changed altogether, right? Now people were working for other people rather than for just themselves in, in villages and on their farms. Uh, they had moved into cities and were working in factories and they were working for businesses and so on and so forth, right? So we call that sort of like the industrial revolution where industrialization takes place and people are now uh, doing things uh, in, in sort of like an assembly line manner, right? Now, the main concern with the assembly line format is that it's not a bad thing, but there's this one primary thought that we have about it. Uh, which is to sort of bring some sort of optimization into what is taking place. Uh, optimizing the process, reducing the waste, increasing efficiency, and uh, the term of productivity, that is to produce more given the inputs that you have with it, right? So this concern has been ongoing uh, for a while. Um, and that concern in itself brought up this idea of project management to a certain and particularly with the organization of uh, DuPont Corporation, which is uh, you may be familiar with it if you watch some Indian TV. They make um, paints and petrochemical products like plastics and so forth, nylon and rayon and uh, things of that nature, right? So this company, they wanted to retool their shop, right? You, you produce one thing, uh, produce enough of it, then you don't need to produce more. So you stop the factory, clean up your instruments, put new tools on, and then restart the factory by the production of the new things that you want to do. <coughs> so that um, in itself gave rise to this thought that we have to do this as quickly as possible, right? So the factory has to be closed down, tools have to be taken off, new tools have to be installed, the factory has to be got ready again, and then the factory has to be restarted. And the concern is to somehow reduce the time frame of doing this, right? So for this, uh, the DuPont Corporation came up with certain ideas, which of course they borrowed from research papers and ideas that already existed. Um, and we claim that somewhere in, in the middle of the 1930s is when uh, this project management idea evolved uh, with the idea of the first CPM coming in. To being right, and this is something that we're going to learn in this class a little bit uh, later on. We actually started with this PPM, and then uh, you know we took a break after that, right? In the middle of it. So the first CPM idea comes up with DuPont, right? Then things continue and things continue, and then I told you about uh, Hitler and his his quest to make the nuclear bomb, and then Einstein coming into the middle and trying to suggest to the President of the United States at the urging of other scientists that the United States should also come up with a nuclear weapon of their own to sort of deter the uh, Germans. So, so the project that started for, for this particular purpose was what we got to know as the Manhattan Project. And the sole objective of this project was to come up with a atomic bomb as a deterrent to the Germans. Right? Now, the problem was, a very simple problem, which is to make a nuclear bomb. But the problem is bigger than this simple problem because 
we don't really know how to make an atomic bomb. And secondly, we don't even know whether it is possible or not. So if we don't know what to do, uh, and we don't know how to do it, and we don't even know whether it's possible, so then the question is, how easy is it for us to figure out how long it will take us to do it and how much money it will cost us to complete it, right? So that's a difficult idea. And uh, uh, clearly the Manhattan Project uh, didn't have answers to these things, right? So the Manhattan Project didn't have a budget, it didn't have a timeline, uh, and you, you couldn't really plan it out too well, right? right? Coincidentally, what happened was that the Manhattan Project was a success, and the amount of money spent on the Manhattan Project was something like $20 billion, uh, which in today's money is 200 times uh, more. Uh, so 20 billion multiplied by 200 times, that's how much money was uh, spent on the first nuclear bomb. And it was even a brand, and they tried and tested it, and it worked by throwing it on, on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan uh, as a sort of defeat to uh, Hirohito and, and his uh, people, right? So that's how things went. And then um, a little bit later, around 1949, an article was published in the Harvard Business Review by a professor of Harvard by the name of Paul Ogadis. And in that paper, he talks about this new discipline called project management and what the role of the project manager is going to be and what are some of the issues that he foresaw that project manager or the project sort of things, right? So we sort of uh, think about that paper a little bit, and, and uh, it's by, I'll, I'll write the name here, it's by Paul Gaddis, right? Uh, and it's called the Project uh, Manager, right? So this is what the paper was, and it was published in the Harvard Business Review, right? And I was quite prophetic, right? Some of the things that Gaddis talked about in his paper still hold true and some of the issues that he discussed in his paper are still some of the issues that the discipline is uh, dealing with. Right? Then um, in, later on in 1959, same year, end of the year, a few more papers come up and they've got a slightly different flavor, they've got a uh, concern, right? uh, they've got an operations uh, management concern. Right? Uh, we also call that as uh, management science, right? Uh, this is a discipline which is highly quantitative in nature. It has its roots in gunnery and uh, sort of uh, projectiles and throwing bombs at people. And so the main concern is to use different types of mathematical equations and formulas to try to optimize something. So the second paper in around 19. Talks about the use of operations management concepts within project management. And then the whole decade of the 1960s and most of 1970s is uh, gravitating towards this idea of operations management concepts within uh, project management. And then, um, as you know, IBM Corporation gets taken over by uh, the son of the founder of Thomas Watson. Senior's son takes over IBM uh, around the late 1950s, by, and his name is Thomas Watson Jr. Uh, and he decides that he wants to change uh, the core business of IBM, which up and, until that point was making um, calculators and cash registers. And he wanted to move from that idea into this idea of computers, even though his father was against it. But anyway, IBM was quite successful in implementing the idea of computers and the idea of the mainframe, the mini computer and the microcomputers and such terms were used. That idea comes up. And we've got then around the 1970s, a lot of computers going around into the dynamic. Right? So of course, what project management does is it uh, adapts and it uh, takes on this new notion and it starts using this thought of um, computers uh, for, for its own business, right? Uh, then in 1970s also what happens is that the Project Management Institute gets founded and uh, the Project Management Institute uh, becomes the main place for 
a standard. Um, standard. Right? So it makes a standard by the name of the PEMBOK, Project Management Body of Knowledge. Project Management Body of Knowledge. Right now, the complete name is a bit different. It is called a guide to the project management body of knowledge, and that's the standard made by the PMI. And the very first um, test on the standard uh, was taken in 1973. Uh, first test takes place, uh, and a lot of people showed up actually for that test. About a thousand people showed up, right? Uh, so since then, uh, since 1973, the PMI has been selling this idea of its own standard and um, it has been testing the professional's um, knowledge on that test and it has been granting uh, certifications to the professionals uh, who qualify. Right? That's right. It's still ongoing, it's still um, available. You can go to their website and have a bit more information about what the test is and how much it costs and where you can take it and so forth. So next so I'll just put the URL for it. It is pmi.org. That's where you can go and take the test. Right? So uh, that goes on. Now things are going on. Computers are being used. There's a lot of operations management concepts in use as well. Uh, projects are going. And then around the 1980s, a bit of a concern arises in the United Kingdom. And that concern was what is going on with these projects? There's a lot of failure. Uh, there's people that are upset because the projects violated the cost baseline. There's a concern that the projects, you know, uh, overspent, or there's a concern that their budgetary estimates were inaccurate and the project ended up spending a lot less, uh, or the time period that they had set up for project got violated and a lot more time got spent or the quality was not what they anticipated and so forth. So this, this is ongoing but you know nobody really talked about it until the 1980s uh, where an article got published in the newspaper and somebody said well uh, the British construction industry is like a dog. It's a dog that needs a good beating and it's dying so no matter how much you beat it nothing's going come off of it. So pretty much the essence of the article was that the construction industry and the projects within it are all a failure. Right? So that gave rise to an inquiry in the form of a commission. Uh, and that commission was headed by uh, somebody by the name of, um, what was his name? Um, let me think of his name. Right? Okay, I'm back. Yeah, so the guy's name was uh, Lord Egan, and uh, the Egan Commission uh, ended up producing something called the Egan Report, right? And that report basically, as I suggested, stemmed from that newspaper article, uh, and the Egan Report talked to the construction uh, industry people, their unions, and uh, their pressure groups and their consultants and experts and so forth. And it, it gave a very clear idea, and which was that, well, uh, you know, you guys don't talk to each other, and there needs to be better communication, uh, and there needs to be, um, you know, you need to get rid of something called the us versus them mentality, uh, and there needs to be better relationships uh, and so forth. Right? So that's the main gist of the even. Uh, around the early 1990s as well, it got published, right? So the Egan report is quite instrumental in the field of project management because um, there's a couple of other reports that um, are, are published or furthermore inquiries um, that took place because or as a result of the Egan report. And it was instrumental um, in, in the sense that even the United States of uh, America also had a similar inquiry within their uh, country, and they also came up with uh, a report which pretty much said what the Lord Egan's report had suggested. Right? So better communication, get rid of the us versus the mentality.